Hi guys, I hope you're all having a very good day. My name is Lilia and in today's video I'm going to be talking about something that is very important but usually not visible in my videos and that is my new camera. I got the new Canon EOS R. I decided to treat myself for my birthday and to see this as a business investment because my camera is like my most important thing in my life. And that is why I decided to buy this ridiculously expensive camera and feel really bad about my empty wallet. Right now I'm casually pretending as if this camera is still in its box and we're going to unbox it. In this video I'm actually going to be unboxing this baby for you guys because I have a little throwback and then I'm going to talk about all the specifications and then I'm also going to be comparing it to my two other cameras the Canon M5 and the Canon 70D I'm actually filming this uh, video right now on my Canon 70D so I can't hold it up last but not least I'm going to answer the question we all have been waiting for is this camera worth its fucking ridiculous price tag so yeah, if you're wondering about all these things and if you're especially interested in this review because you're thinking of possibly getting this camera as the ultimate vlogging camera, then give this video a like. Gotta get those likes, you know? And let's, let's start. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, but more about them at the end of the video. Okay guys, that was the unboxing and now I can finally let go of this box that was a thorn in my eye because everything in my apartment is white and having this very big black box is not cute so, so happy to get rid of that. Before I'm going to be talking about all the specifications of this camera, I first want to put out a very big fat disclaimer. I feel like this camera loosened up a lot of emotions and a lot of anger and frustration with a lot of people because when I was doing my research and due diligence of this camera thinking if I should actually consider the bread and butter diet for a couple months and if it would be worth this camera I realized that a lot of people are very opinionated about this camera. I always thought that like the drama stuff on YouTube only happens in the beauty community, but I realized that the tech community has a lot of drama and a lot of opinions that are quite out there when it comes to this camera. It's definitely a conversation starter. Disclaimer number one, I really wanna emphasize the fact that I am by no means a tech review specialist, tech review channel whatsoever. I know that there are so many other photographers and videographers out there that will have way more knowledge about certain stuff than I do. However, as I said before, I really did my research and due diligence when it comes to this camera. I watched a lot of different reviews, I read a lot of articles about it. I made sure I kind of knew my shit. But if I make any mistakes, if I say anything stupid that is incorrect, not the truth, feel free to politely <laughs> bash me in the comments, but please do it politely. Disclaimer number two. I'm going to be reviewing this camera out of my own perspective, out of my own needs, as someone that creates content. Obviously, as you can tell, I'm a YouTuber, I vlog, that's why you're watching this video. So for me, a camera has to be vlogging friendly in order for me to get it 
as well as being very good at photography too because I do as much photography as videography and when it comes to the photography I do some fashion photography, street style photography but most importantly I do product photography not only for me but especially for other brands too I'm going to put everything through the lens of my own needs no pun intended and last but not least, I really want to state clearly that this product is not gifted by Canon. I'm not sponsored by Canon. Damn, I wish I was. <laughs> um, but I do want to say that I'm kind of a Canon baby. I'm kind of a little bit of a Canon sucker. My very first camera was my mom's old camera, which was a Canon 5D Mark II. That's how I started. And after that, I had an Olympus for a while, an Olympus Pen EPL7, but other than that, all the other cameras that I owned were uh, Canon. I did try some cameras because I shot with other photographers, other bloggers, so I am kind of familiar with other Olympus cameras, other Sony cameras, and a little bit of other Nikon cameras, but I definitely built my Canon kit. So I am definitely locked in by the Canon brands because I invested a lot of money in different lenses and Canon bodies, stuff like that. So to me, it makes a lot of sense sticking to the Canon brands because I already have that investment. And when I tried any other camera, including Sony, I just don't like their color science. Please don't kill me. I just love Canon's color science. I know that this is an argument that a lot of Canon fanboys make, but for me personally, when I shoot a picture with Canon, it cuts my post-processing, my editing process in half because it just fits my colors, my aesthetic on my Instagram and stuff like that so much more than when I, for example, shoot with photographers that use Sony. I spend way more time editing and I just don't really like that. So sorry for this very long disclaimer. It is now time to start talking about all the specs that this baby has. So this camera retails for $2,300. I know, it's a shock. It's really expensive. So this is the body without any lens. And I mean, it's not super small or anything like that. It's it's quite out there. And this is how my camera looks for uh, vlogging. This is my vlogging setup. As you can see, it's definitely a bulky one. It's definitely not small, but it is not as big as my DSLR, so I'm happy about that. This is the additional EF to RF um, adapter. It definitely adds some size to your lenses. And as I will discuss further in this video, I really find that a disappointment because I like everything to be small and compact. This definitely adds some bulk to the lens. But so the first point, talking point that I want to talk about when it comes to the new Canon EOS R is its 4K capabilities. Not a lot of Canon cameras have 4K. My two other cameras didn't have 4K, so I was definitely really excited that I finally could upgrade my video format. However, nothing is as good as it seems because it's kind of disappointing, let me put it that way. First of all, this 4K can only shoot in 30 frames per second. The reason why FPS is important is because you can create very cinematic slow-mo effects when you are editing your footage. If you want to get a good slow-mo, you need at least 60 FPS and preferably even 120 FPS. However, the Canon EOS R can only shoot 30 FPS in 4K and that just doesn't cut it if you want to create a cool slow-mo effect. When you film in full HD it does have the option of filming in 60 frames per second but not 120. And as a comparison my iPhone XS can film full HD in 120 frames per second. So my iPhone can do something that this camera cannot. I mean that is just crazy to me. However, there's an even worse aspect about the 4K capabilities of the Canon EOS R, and that is the crop. One of the biggest reasons why I was so excited about this camera 
is because it is Canon's very first full frame body, so there would be no crop when you're filming. However, when you're filming in 4K, this camera has a crop of 1.8, so that means that the lens, the angle of your lens, has to be multiplied by 1.8 in order to get the actual uh, angle that you're shooting with. So guys, I'm now vlogging uh, with the Canon EOS R, just holding a camera with my hand, I don't have a tripod, and I'm using the 24mm prime lens, the one with stabilization, um, and this is filmed in full HD. As you can see, in full HD it works fine, it's a really good angle, I like this angle, I don't need it wider, but I'm now going to switch to 4K with its 1.8 crop. I feel a little bit uncomfortable because we're this close up and personal right now, but this is me holding the camera the exact same way, but then filming in 4K with a 1.8 crop. As you can see, this is just way too close. You can see all my imperfections. And yeah, I just feel very uncomfortable talking like this. So let's finish this situation. <laughs> If you're planning on using this camera for vlogging and you want to vlog in 4K with this camera, that's going to be pretty much impossible. Or you need to get a very wide angle lens, but those lenses are usually very heavy, very big, very bulky. And I, with my chicken arms, just can't hold that stuff. Next talking point I want to discuss is what I like to call its vlogging capacities. Um, as I said before, I am a vlogger, I'm a YouTuber, a content creator, so I got this camera also for its vlogging purposes. The most important thing why this camera would be a really good vlogging camera is, ta-da, its flip screen. It is really hard to find a camera with a flip screen that is not just like a compact or amateur slash beginner type of camera. I love the fact that this flip screen flips to the side because if you flip up, your microphone is in the way and if you flip down, your tripod, if you put it on tripod, it's in the way. So flipping to the side is, you know, my favorite flip. <laughs> The flip screen is also pretty big and really bright and it has touch screen that works very well so I'm really happy about that too. A new thing that this camera has is this touch bar. Maybe it's just something I have to get used to but at this point I am not really like oh my god that's that's something that I'm using um, but maybe that will change. I think it's a cool feature, but I'm kind of like neutral about it. I don't think it adds anything like really special, really good or really bad. Another thing that I really like about this camera is the fact that it has a headphone jack and a microphone jack. And I also love the fact that it has a headphone jack so you can actually listen to the footage and make sure that the audio is okay. Next up is the Canon EOS R weight and size. And those two things are really, really important to me. Size does matter. And you know, the smaller the better. That's not what she said. I hate carrying a very big camera bag with me. I'm the type of person that will fit in a DSLR or a mirrorless camera in a very small designer handbag. I just don't want to carry big bulky bags around with me. This camera, compared to my previous vlogging camera, the M5, is definitely way bigger. It's also way heavier, not only because of the body, but also because of the lens, but I'll talk about that later. However, it is smaller than a DSLR camera. And for some people that may not be a big deal, but for me that was definitely a deal breaker why I didn't want to get the 6D Mark II. Now when it comes to the weight, the Canon EOS R is made with more metal detailing. It has more metal like outerwear than the M5. So the M5 is lighter because there's more plastic in it, but it kind of feels a little bit flimsy. At first I was like, oh my God, this camera is just way too heavy for me. But now I feel like this is kind of unstable, kind of like it can just like flop out of my hand. And this camera feels sturdy. The thing that I find annoying is the lens that I have to use because that adds a lot of weight. 
I personally love using prime lenses. So the smallest lens that I could find that, you know, would be a good angle for me vlogging myself with this camera is the 24 millimeter um, lens. And then the one with stabilization, not the pancake one. Um, and that is just way bigger than the vlogging lens that I was using before, which was the 15 to 45 EF. S. I mean, this is an EFS lens, it's not an EF lens, so it's going to be smaller, but still. And in addition to that, there's another reason why this camera even becomes more bulky, and that is because it has a new mount. With the Canon EOS R, Canon introduced the RF mount. In all honesty, it just means that you have to buy an adapter, which is an additional $100. That will also make the lens, obviously bigger and heavier and I found it really annoying. Another very important vlogging aspect of this camera is that there is no built-in stabilization. So if you want to handhold your camera, you need to make sure you have built-in stabilization in your lens, otherwise it's just gonna go like this. Or you need to buy a stabilizer, but those things are really heavy. Like I feel like if I buy a stabilizer, I'm just, it's going to be even worse because I just can't. <laughs> I don't have the arm power. <laughs> Now a couple of little things that I did find nice. First of all, the record button is on the top of the camera. Uh, before it was actually back here. So it's kind of annoying like looking with your hands for the button, but now it is up top. The last thing when it comes to the vlogging aspects of this camera is um, the Canon app. So it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth abilities and you can connect it to the Canon app on your phone. If you use the Canon app, you can download all the pictures on your phone or you can use it as a live remote. So you can see yourself already in the screen on your phone, which is usually located a bit closer than the camera if you're filming yourself. But with my Canon 70D and M5, I could only do that when I was shooting pictures. I was not able to do it when I was filming myself, recording video. Now I have some other random points that I wanna put out there. First of all, there's no dual card slot. When I was starting to do my research, I noticed a lot of people were angry about that. And I was like, okay, for me that is not really important because I usually don't really shoot on the go, I shoot at home, so you know, I don't need two cards, if that makes sense. So I can kind of easily retake the shot, it doesn't matter that much. And I never really had a card failure before either. Knock on wood. Another thing that I wanted to address is that there is no built-in flash. I feel like this would not be a deal for a lot of people, but for me it is a little bit. My other two cameras, Canon 70D and M5, both have built-in flash. And I don't use flash that often, but sometimes I do like to use it for some product photography. So it was just really convenient that it was built-in and I didn't have to buy a separate flash. Next thing that I want to talk about is the autofocus. I personally really like Canon's autofocus because I think it is really smooth and it's also pretty good with like face tracking. I think Canon's autofocus is really smooth and that is one of their like really strong aspects. However, I know that whenever I'm filming with someone that has a Sony, it's just way more cinematic. Their autofocus is just, you know, beyond. And Canon really, you know, doesn't compare to that, but I still think it is a really good autofocus and yeah, I, I really like it. The Canon EOS R introduces some more options for autofocus, at least compared to my older cameras. Um, there are seven options. It has your typical face recognition, it has a one point autofocus option, then it has various like area, like multiple focus points option. And the last kind of random thing that I wanted to say is that this camera actually has a shutter that stays like closed when you detach a lens. And I just think that is genius because this way, even if you're switching lenses outside where it's like dirty and dusty, um, you won't get as much dust and dirt into the sensor of your camera because it has this little shutter, this little door. I just think that's genius and I really like that aspect. Now it's time for the comparison. I personally was blown away with 
the quality of this camera compared to my other two cameras. Especially when it comes to the photography with this camera, everything is so sharp, so crisp. When I shoot with this camera, I feel like I'm using a brand new, different lens I've never used before because the depth of field is just amazing with this lens. I was just blown away with its imagery. And with that being said, we're now getting into the part where I'm finally going to answer the question we all have been waiting for. Is this camera worth its fucking ridiculous price tag? When I started using this camera, literally I was blown away the first time I looked at the pictures, as I said, because I just loved how sharp and crisp and how nice the depth of field was when I was working with this camera compared to my other two older cameras. What I can say is that I'm really happy and excited to work with this camera. I love the content that I create with this camera, video or photography. And I'm filming this video now with my Canon 70D and I literally hate it. Like I don't want to grab any of my other cameras anymore because this one is just so much better. Canon's color science, in my opinion, is the best color science out there. And that I find it really important because that just cuts down my editing and post-processing time. So that's kind of my conclusion. This camera definitely doesn't have the best specs out there and you can get a camera for the same amount of money or less with better specs. Specs are not everything and I feel with this camera it just creates beautiful stuff and makes me excited to create it. It makes me inspired. I'm going to say that I think that this camera is worth it if you are looking for a camera for photography and videography as well. If you really want to step up your game and you're a vlogger or content creator, if you don't really care that much about 4K and if you want like the best but also most compact version of a vlogging camera with a flip screen and a headphone jack and microphone jack, then this camera is definitely for you. I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. They have many beautiful and award-winning designer templates you can use for your website, so your website will always be looking beautiful and aesthetically pleasing. It is also an all-in-one platform, so you will never have to worry about patching, installing or upgrading your website, ever. And also, if you're worried about anything, there's 24-7 customer support, so they got you covered. Squarespace is flexible for any kind of website. If you want to know more about Squarespace and this picture interest, then check out squarespace.com slash like to get a free trial as well as 10% off your very first purchase. So guys, I think we're now at the end of this video. I would love to know how you think I did? I really tried my best here. Um, if I failed, I am so sorry to disappoint. I hope this video was helpful and I hope this video gave you an answer to the question if you should start eating bread and butter for the upcoming months, <laughs> which I am definitely going to do. With that being said, I'm going to wish you a very good day, night, morning, whatever, and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye guys. Thank you.